if you just started age of empires mobile and you want to know how to progress your city faster plus you want to know the best heroes to focus on and you want to avoid making mistakes along the way then this video is for you but first what's going on guys cheers i've been playing age of empires mobile like crazy for the past couple of days so today we're going to jump into our beginner's guide and the first thing that we have to talk about is what should your main goal be in age of empires mobile when you first start the game you have a tutorial and then you're going to see some main story quests and challenge quests well right above my head here and it might be a little bit overwhelming when you first start the game and so the first thing that I want you guys to focus on is your town center this is literally the center of all of the progress in your entire account there are a few reasons why this is the number one priority for you if you tap the little information button here and you tap next to the level you can see that the max building level here is 30 and increasing the level of this building and not only gives you higher troop capacity but it also gives you more hero slots and it's also the capstone of your city and by that I mean the level of your town center is the maximum level that any building in your city can be so as you're making progress on some of the other buildings for example some of your troop training buildings or maybe the university or the tavern you might bump up against that ceiling and so the number one thing you want to focus on is the ability to unlock all the levels of all of these buildings think of this as the bottleneck for your early game progress now there are a couple of milestones for the town center along the way the first one is level 12 here and that's because this will give you an additional hero slot and the second one is level 17 this is when you get your second hero slot and what I mean by this is that when you're building your troops you can see here that you can bring up to three heroes in a single army but only when you have a certain town center level and so you have some pretty big jumps in power for your armies when you can add more heroes to those armies now on your way to upgrading your town center there's a couple of things that you want to keep in mind first of all you'll see at the top of my screen here that it shows me how many of each resource I'm currently holding in my city these are resources that are available for me to use right away and these resources are produced periodically over time in your city here we have the farms the lumber mills etc plus you can also get resources from killing barbarians out in the world or you could of course just farm for them by looking for food wood stone or gold but another way that you can get resources in this game is by attacking other players and what that means is that you can also be attacked and somebody might want to plunder your resources as well and so it's important that as you're leveling up your town center you don't have too many resources exposed for plundering because that's going to encourage other people to come and take your stuff while you're offline and while they do that they might also kill off all of your troops as well which are very expensive to train once again now if you tap on the resources on the top you can see how much of each resource is protected by your warehouse and how much is protected by your secured resources and how much is unprotected so right now none of my resources are available to be plundered which is good that means there's really no incentive for another player unless of course I give them a reason to attack me like being rude in chat or something like that or if I attack them first for example but having all your resources protected at all times is the ideal scenario so everything is looking good in my city right now if you find that you're overflowing with resources then you can always upgrade your warehouse this is the building that has a research storage protection limit and you can see it goes up to 2.3 million for each resource but it's worth noting that diplomacy is also really important in age of empires mobile just like it is in any game of the genre so try to make friends and talk to people and enjoy the game with the community because that's how you're going to have the most fun now before we go any further i do want to thank age of empires mobile for sponsoring this video there's going to be a link down below age of empires mobile has officially soft launched in some countries around the world the pinned comment down below will tell you exactly what countries the game is available in right now and you can use my link down in the description to start playing today if you're in one of those countries if you're not you can pre-register with that link down below it helps out the channel a ton and without generous sponsors like age of empires mobile i wouldn't be able to do what i do here on youtube so please consider pre-registering for the game and if you want to play with me i'm currently in kingdom five however speaking about kingdoms i do think that it's actually important that you start in the correct kingdom and for you that is going to be whatever the newest kingdom is whatever the highest number kingdom there is available that's probably the one that you want to start playing the game in now the good news is when you first download the game they will automatically 
automatically put you in the newest possible kingdom and that's for good reason that's the best place that you should be because when you first join a brand new kingdom there's going to be a ton of milestone rewards that you can get access to for free just by playing through the game during its very beginner stages a lot of these free things come in the form of recruiting new heroes in the tavern empire coins which are a premium currency in the game normally you have to spend money to get these but they are very generous at the beginning of a server and you do get a lot of these for free plus you also get things like resources and speed ups and so it's very important for quick progression to play in the newest possible kingdom and one last thing that i want to mention here when you're focusing on leveling up in the early game and focusing on your town center is that you can just relax enjoy the story enjoy the tutorial do your daily quests and enjoy the game after all this is just a video game you don't have to take it super super seriously i know games in this genre typically have a handful of hardcore players that are constantly grinding and if you like to do that that's great but don't get too stressed out about it you can avoid a lot of your mistakes by just continuing to watch this video anyway and if you made it this far already drop a thumbs up on it it helps out the channel and consider subscribing because we're going to be posting more age of empires mobile content in the future now as you're going through the tutorial and the main quest and you're getting the hang of playing age of empires mobile i want you guys to take note of the calendar in the top right corner this is where you're going to see all of the events that are happening right now and also coming up over the next couple of days some of the events here are very important for example the world tree is where you're going to get a lot of elite recruitments here but you're also going to get a ton of skill points hero experience which is how you're going to level them up as well as a bunch of resources as well the wishing card event is something that you can do pretty much every day and you're going to get some free stuff from this as well doing a bunch of recruitments gets you a ton of goodies you get hero medals skill points as well but one event in particular that i want you guys to keep your eyes out for is called the giants roar this is an event where you can collect banners and when you use these banners you can summon enemies out in the world and when you rally down those enemies with your alliance members which we'll talk about in a minute you can get king David medals and King David is a legendary hero in Age of Empires mobile and he's going to be very good for you to obtain if you're looking for a powerful support unit a powerful swordsman or archer hero and especially if you are a free to play player because again this is a free legendary hero that you can get your hands on from this event when it comes around and this is as far as I can tell the only way to get your hands on King David so definitely look for this Giants War event as soon as it comes around now we're going to talk more about important heroes to invest in later in the video so make sure you stay tuned for that because we will talk a little bit more about King David later but before you can even get King David you have to be in an alliance so let's talk about alliances here really quick because alliances are going to help you level up and progress way faster in Age of Empires mobile it is non-negotiable the moment that you gain the ability to join an alliance or create your own you should absolutely do so and you want to be in an alliance that has a lot of active members and is preferably filled with players that speak your language so you can talk to them and make friends and coordinate things a bit easier you can join an alliance by clicking the little banner here on the bottom bar some of them you have to apply to others you can just join immediately and one of the reasons why they're so important is because of the alliance assist feature every time that you go to upgrade a building or do a research at the university you're going to get the ability to ask your alliance for assistance for those upgrades and every time that there's a player in your alliance who is also online on their phone they can tap the help button and it will speed up the progress of that building or research by a minimum of one percent which means this scales with the amount of time that it takes for that building so let's say you know something that builds in 15 minutes you know one percent of 15 minutes isn't that much but later in the game when you have buildings that take 30 days one percent of 30 days is a lot especially considering that you can get it well for me I can get it 10 times so 10 percent now there are ways to get more than just 10 assistants and if you're watching as a new player you might not even have 10 this is literally free speed ups and so you will progress slower if you're not in an alliance that's just how these games work but that's not the only benefit now I did mention earlier that obtaining King David can only be done through rallies and a rally attack requires that other people from your alliance join your rally or you join their rally and that helps you take down certain types of enemies out in the world for example if I want to kill this barbarian vanguard I can't simply attack him I actually have to do a rally attack which means I have to ask my alliance for help here there's no other way for me to kill this content specifically 
and again some events in the game also require rally attacks okay so some content in age of empires mobile requires a little bit of teamwork and you can't do that if you're not in an alliance but great news it's very easy to help your alliance and there's tons of rewards to be had here beyond that though you're going to get free resources every single day from your alliance depending on how much territory they cover out in the world and you're also going to have more stats if you're in an alliance that has invested heavily in technology so for example here you can see we have the ability to focus on some military technology and that means that everyone in the alliance will get a bonus to their swordsman attack and defense their pikemen attack and defense cavalry archers and it doesn't stop there there's resource advantages here as well so like you're literally going to be producing more resources in your cities just by being in an alliance that is focused a little bit on this additionally as you progress through the game and you reach new levels of town center and as you start defeating barbarians of higher and higher level you're going to be sending gifts to your entire alliance and every time they do those things they're going to be sending you gifts as well and so as you can see here i've gotten a bunch of speed ups and resources is just by being in the alliance and other people are doing things on top of that anytime that an alliance member makes a purchase in the game like in the in-game cash shop you get a bonus as well so other people spend money and you benefit from it sounds like a win-win to me it's literally free and the last thing that I want to mention about alliances is the alliance shop now if you come down here on the bottom bar and you tap store on the left hand side it says alliance treasury if you tap that it's actually going to load in your alliance shop that resets every week and as you can see here I have purchased all of the skill points that are available in the alliance shop now this shop uses a specific currency called alliance coins and you get these coins by participating in events or pressing the help button every time that your alliance members need your help or donating to alliance technology every single day for example and you can spend this currency in the shop every week and I would highly recommend that you get as many skill points as you can because later in the game you're going to need hundreds of thousands of these points to max out a hero's skills and we're going to talk about that later in the video but start saving early and this is a free way that you can get a few thousand of these every single week so make sure you do that also if you need experience for your heroes this is a good place to do it elite recruitments are a little expensive to be honest with you but you can change your name in the game for free doing this you can also get some territory relocations which are very very useful actually I'm gonna buy both of these here I think that's very good also some peace shields some speed ups and things of that nature now there's two more building tips that I want to give you guys and these are things to focus on when you are still working on the town center but let's say you've got a couple of more hours before some of the prerequisites are finished and you want to focus on some other buildings well upgrading the embassy should also be a priority why is this well when you upgrade your embassy you actually get more alliance assist chances and remember each additional chance is worth about one percent of speed up time so at max level this gives you 20 more alliance assistance chances the sooner that you upgrade this the more upgrades that you're going to get those extra chances for so this should be one of the first things that you upgrade when you hit a new town center level also if you haven't upgraded your university yet you want to make sure that this is the same level as your town center as well because you are going to start start to hit bottlenecks in your research especially in the economy tree I've already been bumping up against this time and time again you want to make sure you're upgrading your university and finally increasing the level of your mill will also increase the number of farms that you can have in your city and the more farms that you have the more villagers you can assign to them and that just means you're going to be producing more food in your city but this also is the case for things like the lumber camp for example it doesn't actually show it here but when I upgraded my lumber camp to level 10 it allowed me to go from having three villagers at the camp to now four villagers at the camp and that is also the case for your gold mine and also for your quarries at level 10 you can have up to four villagers assigned here and I imagine then that number will probably also continue to go up as you increase the level I just haven't gotten there yet okay so far we've talked about focusing on upgrading your town center progressing through the story completing as many quests as you can and being in an alliance will help you do all of those things a lot faster but you might be thinking okay well why am I doing all of these things right like what's the point of all of this and the point of all this is to get to end game if you've played other city builder games or even like MMORPGs like World of Warcraft for example you know that the best content that a game has to offer is typically at the end game and here in Age of Empires mobile that content is PvP and PvE content so fighting other players and doing other events a lot of you watching if you're interested in Age of Empires you're probably interested in waging war and that is accomplished with troops and with heroes and of 
course also with gear now we're not going to talk about gear in this video because it's actually relatively new at the time of recording this that can be its own entire video somewhere down the line and if that's something you're interested in comment down below and of course subscribe so you don't miss it but here in age of empires mobile we have four different troop types we have swordsmen pikemen archers and cavalry and you're going to be training all of these all the time i mean you shouldn't not be doing that right in fact you should always be building researching and training even when you're about to go offline and you can check to see if you're doing those things by clicking the button right here sometimes it's a hammer sometimes it looks like a molecule or a helmet depending on what you're missing but if you tap that you can see i have three things that are upgrading for construction i have all of my troop training buildings are training and i have research upgrading as well but while it's important to be training all your different troop types at all times for when you do need them in the early game you probably want to focus a little bit more on one or two different troop types because you only have a limited amount of resources right like I said before you have a limited amount of skill points which we'll talk about in a minute you have a limited amount of experience for your heroes and so if you spread those things out across too many different heroes of different troop types then you're really not going to see a lot of benefit there and why is that well let's use Joan of Arc for example because if you're a new player you probably have her and if you tap in the top right corner you'll see that she specializes in the pikeman unit and you'll see that it says that in a troop so that is an army if a hero's unit type specialty is the same as the units they're leading they'll get a bonus to all attributes based on the number of heroes with the same unit type specialty in that troop one hero is five percent two is ten and three is fifteen remember earlier i said get to city I said get to town center level 17 so you can get three heroes in a troop this is why you get 15 percent bonus to all attributes well what are your attributes you can come down in the bottom left corner and you can tap this button here and these are the attributes for your hero and you can see that the attributes change depending on which hero that you're looking at but a 15 percent bonus in these attributes is huge and you might be asking what do these attributes actually do well typically heroes will either deal might damage or strategy damage so of course a higher might attribute means you'll deal more might damage for that hero a higher armor rating is going to mitigate the amount of might damage that that hero will take the strategy stat is used for both the strategy damage and mitigation of that damage and siege is for siege damage now before we move on I do just want to explain a couple of more buttons here on the hero screen first of all every hero has a biography if you tap this little button right here you're going to get an actual biography for every hero in the game and as you level them up you know from unlock to rank one to rank two etc each of these ranks will unlock a biography biography as well as some nice little goodies that you can see I've claimed in the top right corner to the left of that button you'll find a tutorial button and this is actually going to be super helpful for brand new players if they don't really know sort of what direction they should be building their hero or who they should be pairing their hero with here you can see for Josephine there's a couple of different options that you can choose we have an early stage build like for when you first start playing the game and then we have a beginner's choice option which is maybe a little bit more advanced you have a couple more legendaries involved here and then it gets a little bit more specific with what you're trying to do like sieging or a double attack strategy and this all revolves around the different synergies between the different heroes and their different skills and what those skills actually do this entire tutorial system for recommending different hero combinations is super thoughtful so if you ever get confused about what you should be doing with a specific hero you can always jump in here and see what the game recommends moving left once again we actually have a cutscene for every single hero in the game which I think is super cool okay now you've probably already seen Josephine's cutscene so let's take a look at Guan Yu's here. Look at that sunlight coming in. Oh, we got the AOE, baby. Hey, the double hit. Oh, that looks so good. It makes him look so badass. Let's take a look at Harold's next. This is, oh man, you can tell he's a Nordic warrior, baby. Oh, look at that. Look at the axe, dude look at the axe oh my god absolute giga chad absolute giga chad look at the beard on this dude look at the beard and the and the wolf oh baby okay so we know that heroes all have different troop types that they specialize in and we know that a troop can have up to three heroes and it's best to have three heroes of the same specialty in that troop but there's one other major factor you have to consider as well and that is the military specialty of those heroes so here you can see Joan of Arc is a warrior Phanius is a marshal and Gatos is a tactician these are the three different military specialties and here you can see that if you have two heroes 
heroes with the same specialty in a troop they get a 20 percent bonus to all attributes remember those are all the stats we just talked about but if all three heroes share that specialty you get a 30 percent bonus so what would be really nice is if you had three warrior pikemen all in the same army and that's going to give you a 45 percent bonus to all of your attributes that is a massive buff okay so now that we know this we can try to figure out what heroes we should be working on and there's a lot of heroes at the launch of the game but don't worry you don't have to go through every single hero if you don't want to okay because we're going to go over a couple of basics here in this video what you would want to do is pick the heroes that are the most powerful that you're going to have the easiest time getting your hands on as a free to play player or a low spender or a mid spender and things like that. And I'm assuming if you're brand new to the game, there's a good chance that you're either a free to play player or a low spender. So we know that you should be building an army around a specific troop type and some heroes are easier to get than others. And so which troop type would be the best to focus on for a free to play player or a low spender. Now, at the time of recording this video, I would say that it's probably best for free to play players and low spenders to focus on swordsmen why is that well first of all you start the game with Josephine she is a legendary hero she's not the strongest hero in the game but the fact that she has two different unit specialties is really unique not all heroes do that in fact many heroes don't have that ability so that's actually really nice but remember we talked about King David earlier as well and you'll note that he's also a swordsman hero he also happens to be an archer hero as well but he's another legendary that you can get your hands on that is free to play and he also happens to be a warrior just like Josephine very good stuff so far so then we would need a third hero that's also a swordsman warrior well great news Hammurabi is a hero that fits the bill very well and you actually get him by logging into the game for seven days straight you also get your hands on Darius this way as well but unfortunately he is for pikemen and cavalry so you can effectively build an all legendary army completely free to play within the first few days of a server being out and they can all have perfect synergy for 45 percent bonus attributes but also if you look at Hammurabi he has a nice two enemy fan-shaped AoE here it deals might damage and if you look at Josephine's kit as well she also deals might damage and great news King David deals might damage as well and so there is pretty much perfect synergy across all three of these heroes which is great now if you do spend a little bit in the game you can actually replace Josephine here who might be the weakest link I don't love her commander skill here to be honest with you but for one dollar you can get the VIP one chest and that's going to get you a hero known as Miyamoto Musashi and would you look at that he's a warrior he's a swordsman and he deals might damage and not only that it's a three target fan shaped AOE and reduces the skill damage of the target it's a nice debuff this is a very powerful commander skill so the synergy here is great now being a swordsman army it's also worth noting that this army is going to be a little bit more tanky than the other armies that you could choose from so for example looking at my tier two swordsman you can see that they actually have more defense than they do for any other stat looking at the pikemen you can see that the pikemen are actually kind of the most well-rounded unit in my opinion looking at the cavalry you can see that the cavalry are actually the only troop type that has an increased movement speed in the game which gives them a really nice advantage they hit a little bit harder than swordsmen and pikemen but they're not as tanky as swordsmen or pikemen and then finally we have archers who are sort of like the glass cannons they have the highest amount of damage but can take the least amount of damage now of course that's an oversimplification you can deal a lot of damage with all the different troop types but I just want to make it very clear as to what type of army you would be building when you're focusing on swordsmen now if you want to build a pikemen army I would recommend and focusing on Richard the first Leonidas the first and also Frederick Barbarossa Barbarossa seems to be a little bit tanky whereas Richard and Leonidas are dealing some nice damage especially Richard from what I can tell and from talking to a lot of players who've already been playing the game for a while this three hero setup is probably the most commonly maxed amongst really powerful players so if you're looking for like one of the best things to focus on Richard Leonidas and Barbarossa is probably the way to go if you're interested in archers Suleiman actually has a really interesting kit and you can pair him with Theodora Mulan or even Philip even though he is a swordsman and finally if you're looking to go the cavalry route and you want to invest in some absolute savages you could go for Attila Guan Yu and Harold this might be a bit of a glass cannon army but you are going to shred now that you understand a little bit more about building an effective army here in Age of Empires mobile let me give you guys a couple of more generic tips when it comes to investing in your heroes first of all in the early game you should probably work on a couple of the gathering heroes okay you can see here that Darius the Great is a hero that you get for free just by logging into the game 
he does have the gathering specialty and what that means is you'll notice two of the skills here the two on the right being a gathering hero some of these skills that he gets access to are going to be focused on gathering okay and this means that he's going to be able to go out in the world he's going to gather resources much faster than other heroes and he's going to be able to gather more of them okay so he starts with efficient harvest but he also gets supplies transportation later down the line and you can see here that at level 40 and max rank it's 30 percent gathering speed for any resource that you want plus 30 percent load which is insane this will be very helpful for you if resources are a bottleneck for you in the early mid or late game i will say though that you probably don't want to invest too many skill points on gathering skills because these skill points are universal so if i spend skill points to upgrade a gathering skill those are skill points that i can't use for skills that are maybe a bit more focused on pvp you know, speaking of skills it's important to understand each of these four skills for every hero in the game the first skill is the commander skill this is the main skill for every hero in the game the second skill is called the signature skill this skill is set by default and you can't change this for any of the heroes but typically it's part of the hero's kit that makes them unique we then have the first configurable skill and the second configurable skill and as those names imply you can actually configure these and you can see this button on on the bottom it says more skills you tap that and you can actually go through what you want to configure for the skill slot number one and skill slot number two now of course i don't have skill slot number two unlocked yet it comes at level 38 and a lot of the strategy with building a strong army is going to come in the form of these configurable skills right making sure that you have the best synergy between like what should you put in slot one and slot two for every commander in your lineup for example earlier we were talking a little bit about josephine in the tutorial where they recommend different troop configurations you can see the beginner's choice here uses mulan as the primary hero and then josephine and ronnie as both of the second in command the reason that this combination works well is because the default signature skill on ronnie says that she gives the other heroes in her army a chance to enter the double attack state and obtain bonus points to their might attribute so then when you think about what skills should you configure for mulan you can come in here and you can go through and say okay well weak spot attack actually would work really well with Ronnie because in the double attack state as the name suggests you're hitting more than once and so with this skill it says when you launch a normal attack you deal might damage to the enemy so now if you launch a double attack well now you're dealing double the might damage here as well right similarly in the second configurable slot you could put act of mercy that says after launching a normal attack deals might damage to the enemy troop right and so here you can see we're kind of compounding the effects of all the double attacks that you're going to be getting from this default skill on Ronnie if you stopped paying attention this is a good point to tune back in because it's important to know that getting a skill from level one to level 40 costs 101,000 skill points okay 101,000 for a single skill so when you look at an upgrade of 200 that's not that much and of course I don't mind spending it because it's in, going to increase my gathering speed but this number goes up exponentially and soon enough you'll notice that it's going to cost thousands of skill points for a single upgrade and that's probably not worth it for a gathering skill especially when you know later down the line you could be using it for something a bit better for example at level eight both of these skills cost the same amount of skill points to level up do i want point 35 percent more gathering speed or do i want to invest in a skill that might help me a bit more in pvp and pve scenarios the choice is yours but usually you're not going to want the gathering speed if resources are not a problem for you now this is also very important to know if later down the line i decide that i no longer want to use efficient harvest as a skill for darius the great i can change it to something else such as sunder or supply transformation and when i do that sunder will automatically be the same level that my efficient harvest was because effectively when you're leveling up this skill you're actually leveling up this third slot if that makes sense so the first slot is your commander skill the second slot is your signature skill you can't change those the third and fourth slots you can change and so when you're upgrading your third skill slot no matter what skill you put here it will be the same level okay so hopefully that makes sense to you guys if you change your skill later you don't lose that progress for that hero but if you want to play it safe you can save a lot of your skill points for a little bit farther into the game when you have a little bit of a better idea 
as to what exactly it is that you're doing because you don't want to just spam upgrade these things you'll probably regret it later and the final point that I want to talk about here with heroes is their commander skill their commander skill is often their most powerful and it is only activated for the commander of an army so what does that mean the first hero in your troop is your commander the second two heroes in your troop are called second in command and they do not cast their commander skill again that's because these skills are some of the most powerful in the game and so only the commander will cast their skill important to know it does cost rage and some commanders have a higher or lower rage cost than others and finally the level of your commander skill is dependent on the level of the hero so you can see here that Josephine will bump her skill up to level 20 when I upgrade her to level 40. so right now she's level 30 I'd have to take her all the way up to level 40 if I want to get more damage on this commander skill so luckily you don't actually need skill points for the commander skill specifically but you do need hero experience how much experience you ask well the maximum level for heroes in the game is 120 and from what I can tell it takes about 79.5 million experience to get the hero there so you're gonna need a lot of these experience tombs good thing I can buy them in my Alliance shop okay if you've made it this far into the video I'm gonna give you guys a bonus tip and this is gonna help you out a ton you might even want to screenshot this and that is the town center upgrade requirements okay every time you go to upgrade your town center there are are some buildings that are a prerequisite so to go from town center one to two you need to upgrade your house from two to three lumber from three to four the mill so on and so forth all the way up to town center level 30. from 29 to 30 you need to do the university and it also seems to be the case that your city walls are always a prerequisite so you'll always have to do that okay so we've talked about buildings we've talked about heroes and troops now let's talk about research and technology there's so many things here to focus on which should be your number one priority well first of all the economy tree I think is the most important in the early game because you don't want to run out of resources okay it's going to be super annoying if you have to keep opening packs or if you can't do an upgrade because you don't have enough wood for example so increase the production of your city right away and you want to prioritize the research speed and the building speed technology the earlier you do this the earlier that you complete the research speed technology the faster every other research in the entire game is going to be and that also applies to your military research as well so why would you do military research first at full length you have to wait longer if you start there than if you were to start with economy lower the research time for everything else and then move on to military right same thing with building speed the sooner that you do this the sooner that the building speed of every future upgrade is enhanced so focus these two first get here as soon as possible rush this I'm telling you this is the best thing to do and then once you've maxed out all the economic research that you can at your current town center level then while you're waiting for your bottlenecks to upgrade like you're waiting for your city wall to upgrade or you're waiting for the town center to upgrade then you can go back in and focus on some of your military tech a lot of these are very quick so if you do want to get these out of the way on day one that's fine unlocking tier two units is very important as well same thing with the deployable troops having another deployable troop is is very very beneficial so getting to this as soon as you can as well is very good but again focus economy first now when you're upgrading your buildings and you're going through the research and the technology if you ever do run out of resources or you run out of speed ups for example you can get a lot of that stuff from out in the open world okay you can straight up farm for resources you can collect gold wood food whatever and you can also get it from defeating barbarians out in the world you can see here that not only do you get a first victory reward the first time that you defeat a barbarian of a certain level your alliance will also get a reward by the way which is nice and one of these rewards is empire coins which again is the premium currency in this game that is the equivalent to like gems in other games for example but again even just the regular rewards are food wood stone gold hero experience skill points remember both of these are super important to progressing your heroes and you get speed ups and you also can get sanctuary blueprints for the guard tower I'm not going to cover that in this video but just know that this is extremely important for upgrading your guard tower and you don't actually have to go through and search for barbarians out in the world you can tap this little magnifying glass and the game will actually search for whatever level barbarian you want and also the type of barbarian you want so if you want to defeat a swordsman barbarian barbarian of a level 13 then the game will find the nearest one to your city and you can go ahead and attack it for five stamina points now I'm not going to go into this too much right now but a super cool feature that Age of Empires mobile has implemented is an auto battle feature 
for barbarians so if you don't want to sit here and constantly search for barbarians and constantly go out and attack and go back to your city and then it's this whole grind right well you can automate that process by tapping auto battle you can set the minimum number of troops in your army to send out you could set your hospital capacity and then you can tap auto battle and what you're going to notice is my josephine is going to come out and attack a nearby barbarian that fits the criteria that i just specified and then it's going to go back to my city and then it's going to come back again and it's going to search automatically and you'll see this auto button i could literally go back to my city and do whatever i want josephine is just going to keep finding and fighting barbarians as long as the requirements are met and it's just going to be farming all of the rewards from those barbarians without me having to do anything that's amazing every city builder game should have that feature oh my god it's incredible the game will do the grinding for you so you don't have to sit online for six hours a day just to get maximum value i love it now one of the most exciting aspects of age of empires mobile is the city siege gameplay so i wanted to take a couple of minutes to show you guys some city siege gameplay so that way you guys have some insight as to how this actually works in age of empires mobile because I'm sure you're going to be eventually sieging some cities when you're in an active alliance. So here you can see the alliance VGB is sieging the city gates. They're destroying the wall here to this inner city. And you can see that the sort of health of the city is going down as they're swarming it. Initially, they actually launched a rally on the city gate. And then once the health got really low, then they all took their strongest players and swarmed down the rest of that gate. And you can see that it actually completely crumbles to the ground in real time and now the players of this alliance are going into the city and attacking the treasure vault you can see that there's actually different buildings inside the city so the cities in the world okay these are the capital cities on the map this is not a player city but these capital cities do, they're not just a coordinate on the map these are actual cities on the world map and you can see that they're comprised of multiple different buildings all of which are historically accurate right you have the university over here you have the treasure vault and then you see that there is sort of a main pathway up into the city center right there which we're going to take a look at in a second here we have the city hall is being attacked here and what you'll notice is that these players are choosing to swarm down these structures and they're being garrisoned by what i assume to be some sort of barbarian or some sort of pve content but once this alliance actually takes and controls this capital city they themselves are going to be the ones that can actually garrison these buildings and sort of prevent it from being taken from an enemy attacker or somebody who's looking to destroy their alliance basically right now here you can see a warning of significant loss and what that's saying is that some of the buildings uh, the city of wyvern you can see over here what it's saying is that if you decide to attack the main structure at the center of the building you will probably take crazy losses right it makes sense that the most important building in the city would be the one that is the most heavily fortified and is also the one with the strongest garrison you can see here that it has 219,000 troops in this garrison here and so if you attack that many units with just a couple of armies let's say you only have a hundred thousand units you're going to be absolutely destroyed you can see that there is a durability meter here for that uh, that structure as well the city of wyvern so as you can see we have the vgb alliance coming in here and conquering this city for the very first time the city hall is literally burning in real time you can see that there's some members of the alliance focusing on the university and as we zoom out here you can see that there's actually quite a, a high number of buildings left and there's four different city gates that you can basically attack when you come into any capital city and what's really important to note here is that this is kind of a historically accurate representation of how a city might actually be sieged during medieval warfare right because it, it you notice that they didn't actually come in the front gate they didn't just walk into the front gate and say hey we're here we're gonna start killing your troops right they had to break down the wall from the side right and it makes sense that you would come in at sort of a unexpected angle when you're looking to catch your enemies off guard and again here you can see that they're attacking the machine plant there's the temple over here which is on fire that would be probably damaging to the morale of the citizens of the city for sure but one thing that you can notice is that they're focusing on the buildings around the outside of the of this of the center building here because one of the things that typically would happen in medieval warfare 
is you know you would have a big advantage as the attacker if you destroy the outermost walls of a city if you destroy sort of the intelligence centers and the outposts on the outsides of the city first before going into like the center castle for example you want to cut off the uh, city's intelligence from the outside in that way they don't know how many troops you have that way they don't know what direction you're coming from and you can catch them off guard and by kind of cutting off that intelligence then you're going to have a better strategy for taking out the center city there now also one thing that you can notice here is you know obviously they're swarming down the city hall that's an insane strategy here i mean they are doing some real work it is literally on fire in real time but one of the things that they're going to have to do when they're going to actually take the city itself the city center um they're going to have to launch a rally attack to do that right because as we saw before the player was going to attack it all on their own but they didn't have enough troops and they would take sustained losses and so one of the most important aspects of being an alliance for things like this is that you can work together and you can launch that rally attack and bring a significant amount of troops all at once to put all of your forces on the front line and basically deal as much damage as possible to the the actual city center itself and you can see here that the members of this alliance are strategically located right outside the gates here so they can basically reinforce their armies as troops die as they you know are killed off they can reinforce the siege attack and send more troops in there it makes sense that they would want to be as close as possible to the action and again this is historically significant this is accurate to how things would actually be right you want to have troops stationed and nearby so that way they can join the attack if they the reinforcements are needed here so here we can see a couple of armies coming in they're attacking the siege plant the metal plant off to the left there as well and the city of wyvern i mean look at how many armies we have on this on the field at the same time and you can see the buildings up that up at the top that they've already been attacking were completely destroyed it is turned to rubble and you'll also notice that there's i don't know if you can tell here but there's actually bundles of wood on the ground and what's interesting is that just like in real city sieges in age of empires mobile you can come in after the city siege and you can pick up some of the the wood that was that has fallen from the buildings and structures that you've destroyed and you can take that wood back to your city and use those resources to upgrade your own buildings upgrade and train troops and all those things which i think is super super cool again like the little details like that are what make this type of gameplay uh, a lot more realistic in age of empires mobile than in other city builder games where a city siege like this would just be a coordinate on the map and it would just be attacked with a rally and then it's burned and that's it and you're done right and that would be the whole gameplay but here you can see literally dozens of players coming in here and destroying each individual component of this you know historically accurate city basically and I think that that is super super cool and here you can see there's actually a rally being formed and it's got half a million troops in that rally and that's what I was talking about before where that size of army is what it would actually take to defeat the center fortress here right the the city of wyvern because one of the things when you know actual medieval warfare would would take place um one of the things to know is that a lot of times you know once you break the city walls that's not the end of the fight right like okay you're in the city um but the, all the soldiers are still there they're ready for the close quarters combat and so you need to come with significant numbers right I mean if we talk about for example the siege of Rhodes the Ottoman Empire and Suleiman took I think it was between one and two hundred thousand units in their army they sieged Rhodes and the casualty ratio was insane the defenders of that siege only had like 7,000 units defending against the massive attack and because they were on the defending end they had an advantage and so bringing a lot of troops here to the battlefield is required it is significant in history it makes sense and this is a more accurate representation of how a city siege might actually work work and so here you can see the actual rally is hitting the city and it is going down quick boys it is going down like crazy I mean it took maybe a minute for that rally and again it's half a million troops you can see there's actual siege weapons right here the massive siege weapon that was deployed by the alliance bringing in a what it looks like a massive battering ram you can see is just hitting the city over and over and over again and these are some of the you know the the weapons of war some of the machines that you would be able to create as a member of an alliance here in age of empires mobile and of course there's catapults and things like that and these types of siege weapons are what you would need for siege warfare to be effective here and so here you can see that there was the rally hitting and now a bunch of other players 
are swarming down the city of wyvern so it looks like there's a certain durability factor of the city even after the garrison of that city is defeated so i think the sort of siege weapons here this massive battering ram here just smashing into the city that's what you're going to want to actually take this place and capture this for your alliance now jumping outside the city walls you can see here that there are still some players outside of the city attacking the outposts which are located around the outside around the edges and this is what i was talking about before where a lot of times the direction that you attack from matters a lot and those outposts are going to be the ones that you want to take out the soonest right so here you can see these players coming around the the outside and destroying all these different outposts and again this is something that if you are the owner of the city if you are defending the city these are things that you're going to want to have ready and available to defend against anybody who wants to take that city over anyway from start to finish it looks like this city siege took about 40 minutes or so and that was with a well coordinated alliance up against the you know first time occupier pve content i can imagine that a city siege when you're going up against an actual alliance that owns that city could take even longer and you may even have really massive sort of epic battles around these cities and you're competing for an actual capital and to control a portion of the world map and so these big siege battles are going to be very important for those alliances that want to control their kingdom and it's crazy this is like the most realistic city siege gameplay that i've ever seen in in a mobile game right like it's actually nuts i love it now i saved these tips for later in the video because it might not apply to some of you but if you are considering spending a little bit of money in age of empires mobile there are some good valuable bundles that you should be buying and there's other bundles that aren't going to get you as much value so here i want to tell you guys some really important bundles that you should be considering first of all the best bundle in the entire game is the building q pack for two dollars and 99 cents why is this it permanently gives you a third building q this increases your building speed by 50 percent instantaneously for the rest of the time that you play the game no question for three dollars 50 percent building speed is the way to go plus you get some empire coins very nice stuff here this is if you only buy one thing the best thing that you should be buying in age of empires mobile if you do decide to purchase that bundle however the game will give you another legendary hero for free on top of that okay so for 299 you get a third builder forever and another legendary and you can either choose between mulan or leonidas the first both of these are warrior heroes leonidas is a pikeman hero and as i talked about before he is one of the most commonly maxed legendaries at the time of recording this he's incredibly strong but i've also heard really good things about mulan as well and she is an archer hero so depending on what type of army you are building will determine which of these two that you should be focusing on another bundle worth discussing is a limited time bundle that pops up when you get your hands on a brand new legendary hero whether you recruit them from the tavern or otherwise you're going to see the hero growth bundle pop up and this only is around i believe for 12 hours and you have 12 hours to buy it and after that it goes away and the reason that this is so valuable is because for 9.99 you get 10 universal legendary hero medals which are very very valuable you can put these into any legendary heroes except for certain special ones and you also get a lot of that hero experience that we talked about before remember you need like 79 and a half million of this to max out a hero so you're gonna need all of this plus you get a ton of resources and 5,000 empire coins as well some speed ups this is definitely one of the best bundles in the game look at that Josephine is still killing barbarians as we speak another great value is for the first seven days of logging in there is a 299 sort of login bonus here and if you do unlock this tier of rewards after seven days you get five five universal legendary hero medals so this is actually an even better value than the 999 bundle that we talked about before in terms of hero medals the legendary skill medal at day three is also very important and the legendary skill scrolls on day six all of this is very good stuff for 299 I think this is definitely worth it if you get all the way to day seven for sure the monthly pass comes in two varieties there's basic and advanced for three or five dollars respectively and this is super valuable probably one of the best values in the entire game if you log in every single day for 30 days and if you do you get 450 coins a day for 30 days plus the 2500 right away that's 16,000 coins on top of all the other stuff that you get like the skill points and the experience which I've already said is extremely valuable well 9,000 coins is $20 so 16,000 coins 
on top of all the other stuff it's probably like 30 or 40 dollars worth of value there for five bucks we also have to talk about the growth fund okay this is essentially as you level up your town center you're going to unlock new rewards in the growth fund so right now i've already claimed all the free rewards on the top up to level 11 but if you spend the 9.99 you get all of the coins on the bottom as you reach those levels so in total you get 82,000 coins for ten dollars normally 50,000 coins is a hundred dollars so for the coin value this is probably the best coin value in the entire game right here but that's only if you hit the maximum level so keep that in mind and then finally there is the daily special offer now this is not as good value as everything else that we talked about but it is a way to get another legendary hero either Ronnie or Frederick Barbarossa we talked about Barbarossa before being a pretty good hero that you can invest in for pikemen and for 499 you get all three of these bundles and these chests not only come with more empire coins that's the premium currency but they come with medals of Barbarossa and my Josephine is still fighting guys she is still at it. look she spent down all my stamina I don't have to do anything she just did all the grinding for me look she's still going that's amazing she's killed 11 barbarians for me already that's crazy anyway guys if you made it all the way to the end of this video I hope you'll drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other Age of Empires players might see it while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload an Age of Empires mobile video and comment down below your thoughts on Age of Empires mobile have you tried the game yet if not you can try the soft launch today in a select few countries or you can pre-register for the game right now with the link in the description below or in the pinned comment Comment. again I'm in Kingdom 5 and I also want to thank Age of Empires Mobile once again for sponsoring today's video without sponsors like them it wouldn't be possible for me to do what I do here on YouTube so please consider supporting them help me by helping them and of course the game is absolutely free and I am having a blast so far in Age of Empires Mobile so I would love for you guys to try it out as well with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace